What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Against All Odds podcast. I'm here with Francely, so let's roll the intro and let's get started. Uh, give me your full name, your age, and your place of birth. Um, my name is Francely Zephyrin. I was born in Canada. Uh, and uh, what's the other one? Um, place, place age, of, age, 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 age. I'm 26. And 27. what position? Uh, I'm a right back and a defensive mid. Okay. Um, you haven't played defensive mid for us, huh? No, not training that much? Uh, kind of. It's been a long time right now. It's yeah. Like, I train a lot in defensive mid. Mm-hmm. So. Um, and then, uh, so, where you were born in Canada, right? Yeah, I was born in Montreal, the French part. Yeah, because you grew up speaking French. Yeah, only French. Only French. <laughs> yeah. And you didn't learn English until like a year ago, that's what you said? No, I was actually, when I started uh, college, it's like uh, six years ago. Mm-hmm. Six years ago, like I didn't know nothing. Like I was, I was pretty bad, man. Like sometimes I was, I'm watching old videos. <laughs> yeah. So geez, it's, I, it's I crazy. It's crazy that in Canada, like when I have an image of Canada, like I, obviously because I'm from the West Coast, mm-hmm. and so I think of Canada, I think of like Vancouver or even like Toronto sometimes. But like I just think of them as like the typical hockey American, yeah. like like <laughs> like American neighbors to the north. And I don't even think like oh yeah, people probably there don't. Some people don't even speak. English, yeah, you yeah know? exactly. Yeah, be- everyone like forget this part. Like when I came here, uh-huh. I had to explain all the time that we yeah, we have a French part, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, did you grow up playing soccer from like the minute you could like walk and stuff? Yeah, yeah, because my my dad was playing, mm-hmm. and uh, like watching him like playing soccer, like it was a pretty like eye level. It was really good. They, they told, that's what they told me because sometimes I don't remember. And, like, <laughs> I was I was too young. Yeah, but uh, and they they always talk about him so. Yeah, since I started seeing him and say, yeah, I want to play soccer. So, w- did he play pro, is it? Uh, no, he didn't play pro. Like, my uncle played pro, mm-hmm. but he, he just, he said he was better than my uncle, but he didn't take soccer seriously, mm-hmm. but he was good. And he, did he, like, live his whole life in, in Montreal as well? No, he, from, he was, he's from Haiti, he was born in Haiti, uh-huh. and uh, uh, when he was young, he just moved to Montreal. Okay, okay. And so your uncle played pro, though? Yeah, he played pro if, by his first division in Haiti. Okay. Yeah, that's but I didn't. I don't know. I don't know him because uh, he passed away uh, a long time ago. Uh huh. That's cool. I mean, that's cool that he's was a good soccer player. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. So soccer kind of like is in your blood. Yeah. Exactly. Much. Yes. Um. Do you have any brothers and sisters? I have a little brother, but mm-hmm. when I say little, is um, twenty four. I think. Okay. Twenty four. He's playing. Some, <laughs> yeah, he's playing a semi pro. He's playing semi pro in uh, Montreal. Okay. Is that like League One? Is it? Uh, it's like, like in Canada, we it's like we, they consider that as a third division. Okay. Third division team. That's yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's that's awesome. And, and have you been back to uh, Haiti a lot? Uh, I've been one time, uh-huh. when I, uh, two times, to train. Uh, with the national team, the youth, the youth mm-hmm. teams. Uh, when I was uh, sixteen, sixteen, and the other one, uh, um, I was maybe eighteen. Okay. And I went to train over there with them. And after that, uh, like, uh, the national team came to Montreal, mm-hmm. the senior team, when I was 20 years old, and I, and I played a game. But played a game, I was on the bench with them. That's cool. Yeah. It's still cool, yeah. yeah. It's still cool. That's sick. Yeah. I've always, I actually just talked about, like, a week ago. I was like, one of my, like, I wish, like, I was from, like, a smaller country like that, where it's, like, yeah. a more, like, you have more opportunity to go for the national yeah. team. Yeah. And, like, because, I mean, in America, it's like, all right, I got to be playing. So much competition. Be, be performing in the MLS or, like, over yeah. in Europe. Because one of my friends is, like, over at, with the Guam national team. Mm. And he's yeah. over in, like, Bangkok, Thailand right now. Like, that's so sick. Yeah, <laughs> it's sick. It's sick. Man, I think, like, to be honest, I was on the bench, but was one of the most beautiful thing that happened to me. Uh-huh. You know, I was on the bench and I was smiling and stuff. Like, <laughs> like I was like, I say, yeah, I'm smiling and people seeing me saying hi and everything. It's my, it was my first time signing autographs too, so uh-huh. it was kind of cool. You say you were 20? Yeah, it was 20. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. All right, Alan, so you grew up playing soccer then. Mm-hmm. Um, and when did you start, like, like I guess training or with the team? Was that like five years old, like recreational or? Yeah, I start uh, at... Uh, Four years old because like I started at four years old. Uh, it's like a recreational recreational team, mm-hmm. and uh, after that we just stay with the same club and everything. And in Canada we have uh, in Montreal mm-hmm. uh, we have A and double A and triple A. A okay. is like the the lowest level. Double A is like until you're thirteen is the highest level, mm-hmm. and triple A is uh, 
from 13th and up. Okay. And so what level did you start it off at? Like uh, I started off at the double A, straight, uh-huh. straight double A and uh, 13 triple A. And uh, right after the triple A, I was uh, 17. I started some uh, semi pro. Okay. 17, yeah. Wow. So you, so like literally from four years old on, you're playing at the highest level yeah. in Montreal, like that you could play at. Yeah. And how was this year round? Did you play any other sports or no? Uh, that's just soccer. I don't know. How, I don't know how to swim. I don't know how to <laughs> skate. I don't know how to play basketball. It's just, <laughs> just soccer. Just that's soccer. It. How was it like in Montreal of other kids your age? Is it is it like that? Like do most people play soccer? I mean, I, I like honestly, I've never been in Montreal. Like, yeah, you should, man. Yeah, should. I want to. I've been yeah. to Ottawa. You Ottawa should. is cool. Yeah, <laughs> been to Vancouver too. Yeah, Vancouver was Montreal nice. is pretty cool, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, for soccer, I think is the most popular sport right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, because the thing is that it doesn't cost that much money to play, yeah. you know. Like for hockey, you have to buy all this stuff, you know. Uh, for basketball, like maybe basketball too could be less expensive. Yeah, but it's, but it's probably hard in in Montreal. Like, yeah, because yeah. it's so cold. Exactly. And everything. Yeah, exactly. But uh, the thing is that in Canada we have the indoor mm-hmm. futsal and uh, outside after that. So we play we play all all year round. Mm-hmm. So you're playing a lot of futsal too? Yeah, a lot. A lot. Uh-huh. I liked it. I really liked it. There's a lot of players, like especially uh, the Brazilians, talking to them, playing mm-hmm. growing up. Like Rodrigo just played futsal until he was like 12 years old. I yeah. like, didn't play on grass until until then. And then like same with like Janu played futsal all the time growing yeah. up. Did you did you play futsal? I I didn't start till I was like 12, mm-hmm. and I did like two years. Okay. But like I loved it. I loved it. Yeah, it's so cool. It's so you get so many touches on the yeah. ball. It's so much fun. It's so high intensity. Like the the one the thing I don't like about the eleven v eleven once you play futsal mm-hmm. is it's like you barely get any touches on the it's ball. It's true. And the thing is like me, I'm the kind of guy like I like to dribble. Mm-hmm. So indoor, you show your skills a bit and everything. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, and when you lose it, you don't have to. It's not that. Yeah. You don't like, you have to track back a hundred yards. You have to like exactly. just track back like. Five ten yards. Exactly. Um, so that's so awesome. So you're playing year round. You're you're playing with a double A team yeah. when you're like four or five, and then futsal in the winter, mm-hmm. um, and then just were you playing a lot on your own as well, like just with the ball with your uh, brother or anybody. Uh, I was just going to to practice with my dad mm-hmm. all the time and playing by myself uh-huh. all the time. Like I was practicing and I was on the side playing with the ball and sometimes you know like some of his teammates uh-huh. would show me some stuff and I would try to do it. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's like. That's really cool. I like that how it's like so you like were learning the techniques and like growing up with people that were a high, really high level around yeah, you, yeah. which is cool. Yeah. I think that's that's super beneficial for younger players to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is. <laughs> um, and then when so you're from four until like thirteen, tw- or when did you say you went to Triple A? Was that twelve? Uh, thirteen. Thirteen years 13, old. Yeah. 13. So you're playing Double A. Um, how was that? Like, did you have any setbacks? Was it just kind of smooth sailing, just training, playing, and having fun those years? Or um, uh, if I remember correctly, I think it's uh, we had like two two practice a week. Mm-hmm. With uh, uh, it was kind of it was pretty serious. You know, we had like everything was set up. Uh, we had to travel a bit everywhere in in, in Quebec mm-hmm. to to play, and it was it was really serious actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's that's good. Yeah. Uh, and then like. No injuries, nothing like at that time. You're just like a yeah, little kid, just, yeah, I was just l- bouncing off. I was lucky. Off. Yes, I was lucky. I was lucky. Like no injuries, nothing like that happened when I was mm-hmm. young. Yeah. Did you ever feel burnt out when you just played soccer because you're playing other sports? No, not at all. Just loved it. Yeah, I just loved it. Mm-hmm. I just loved it. And how was you as a as a student? Like, were, were your grades doing well with you? <laughs> you just smiled. Yeah, yeah it's good. I think like um, so- soccer is like my my like my school. Yeah, yeah. It's really it's like. You have to perform, like you know, you have to perform uh, in school to play soccer. Because mm-hmm. I was in a, in high school, I was in a kind of program where yeah, you have three classes a day, mm-hmm. and after that, uh, the afternoon you just play soccer. Really? Yeah, and that was really cool. But you had to keep your grades up to stay in the program. I see. And I was struggling with that, <laughs> but yeah, because I wanted to play soccer, I just had, I had to, to keep it up. What, what uh, how, from what years until what years were you in that program? Um, I was uh, at, I don't know for for you guys, but for us it's like start high school at fourteen years old. Yeah, that's what fourteen, and uh, I was there for four years. So fourteen to eighteen. Yeah, fourteen. Yeah, fourteen to eighteen. Yeah. Okay, wow, that's sick. So was it like how many people were in? Did you did you take classes like in an actual classroom or were they online or? No, it was in actually an actual cl- classroom. Mm-hmm. Like we had a lot of sports like swimming. Uh, uh, oh, I see. Ice skating and mm-hmm. all this stuff. Hockey. 
and we were together we have three classes a day mm -hmm. but it was like really like you're going fast you know because you only have two classes you have to go through all everything yeah and right after that you just go to a sports uh, facility yeah and you just go play that's awesome yeah Did you like that oh yeah it was, <laughs> i didn't How? want to huh i didn't want to like i didn't want to quit the field you know like so sometimes you have a bad grade yeah and uh you know you're gonna have to tell your parents, <laughs> but me, I just, I was just looking at the clocks and no, I don't want to quit. Like, just, just let me stay here. Yeah, yeah. yeah but so yeah. that's so like it, you really were motivated to keep up your grades just for yeah. just so you could stay in that program. Exactly. Yeah. Um, did a lot of those people in that program are they like high level athletes like trying to go play in college or play pro or do something or? Um, yeah, actually, yeah, the the majority of them were playing double A AA or triple A, mm -hmm. and some of them. Um, like maybe my first year we were playing uh, Team Canada mm -hmm. oh wow yeah, Team Canada like we call it the C CNHP mm -hmm. and it's like a program for peop uh, young players from, from, uh, that get, get scout for national teams okay that's awesome yeah Did you, so uh, how was like how many people were in your classroom for this uh, we had a lot we had a lot because it's a lot, all the sports are together uh -huh. so we have uh, maybe 30 30 30, 35 sometimes. So that's good. Yeah. Because, like, it's like, a, have you seen, like, a our training facility, like, at Titan, those guys that, mm -hmm. that study yeah. like that? Yeah. Uh, I always wonder, like, if, like, if I would have liked that or all that stuff. I mean, I probably would have because yeah. you're just playing sports all the yeah, time, which exactly. is cool. Yeah. But I feel like I would definitely want where there's, like, 30 kids in class. I would hate it if it's, like, one-on-one -on -one with yeah. a teacher, you know, and you're, like, isolated. Exactly. Yeah. Because I have to be talking and doing something. Yeah, that's true. Um, and then, so how was, uh, so you went to AAA at age 13, you mm -hmm. said. Yeah. And how was that, that jump from AA to AAA? Was it a big jump, or is it just kind of like? It, it was kind of hard. Uh -huh. It was kind of hard because, you know, the things that um, they always say, like, um, you have to be the best, you know, and usually, like, in my team, mm -hmm. I was I want the, one of the best in the AA. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I go AAA, like, everything changed, you know, everything, everyone is good. Everyone mm -hmm. has the same capacity as you. You just have to work hard and hard and hard to like make a difference yeah you know sometimes like like it was my first time you know being on the bench yeah so it was kind of hard at the beginning but i just keep it up and you know with uh, that that program when i was in high school mm -hmm. uh, training every day was kind of getting better and better mm -hmm. how many times a week did you train with your triple a team um during the summer it was three to four times uh-huh and during the winter it was uh, maybe two times, two to three times. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then when you when you said with like that program that w you were in school, when you'd finished, where, who'd you train with? Like, was it with like, like did you get time off to go with your AAA team, or did you go train uh, with? No, like it would it would be like that. Um, during the week, uh -huh. I trained with, uh, uh, for example, the my my team in in school at school, the high school, my high okay. school, and right after that, I would have the practice with the AAA. Okay, I see. So you're like doubling up yeah, on training. Doubled, yeah, sometimes I would double up. How was that? Like on your body and like, you know, I mean, like you, you know, when you're young, yeah, you, know, you don't really feel it. Like right, the next day, you say, okay, good, I'm fine, and I will go. And you love it so much. You yeah, don't think about that. So. Yeah, I was, I was like thinking about that the other day too. Like, when I was like 14 through 20. I think I was doing double days or like yeah. even triple days almost like yeah, every day. You just love it. And no problem. Like the next day I'd wake up and I'd feel like maybe a little sore, but I'd be yeah. fine. <laughs> then now it's like I do a hard session. I'm like, oh, I need two days off. <laughs> like my body is <laughs> yeah, catching up. True. Um, I'm getting old. Yeah. So, but you're just playing just tons of soccer then. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I was just sleeping soccer, eating soccer, mm -hmm. like homework soccer. That's all I have to do. Do what? Uh, like at that point, did you think that you wanted to go pro? Is that was that your goal at that all point? All my life, yeah. all my life, I just wanted to go pro. You know, like and that's that. I think that's about one thing that made me just I want to go pro because um, my dad was playing a, a, a final, mm -hmm. and there was so much people. So like yeah. it was crazy. I couldn't see nothing, and uh, I couldn't see nothing like around. I couldn't see my dad on the field, and he saw he saw like he just told me to come mm -hmm. and took me and put me on the bench up with the players. And it was cool. in PKs too. Like it was a PKs, and he went to shoot his PK and scored, and I was kind of happy, so happy, and everything. And I say, yeah, that's that's what I wanted to. That's awesome. Yeah. So you remember like the exact yeah, moment. Exactly. That's yeah. really really cool. And just the atmosphere of the game, huh? Yeah, it was like people yelling, <laughs> me, like laughing, and like I was just, I was mm -hmm. just, I loved it. Yeah, so, I just loved it. So so, 
And that was when you were probably like really young, huh? Like, yeah. How old were you there, probably? Uh, I was at, at about four or five years old. Mm-hmm. Four or five years old. But, you know, those things just stay in your memory forever. Yeah. 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 So four or five years old until the whole time you just wanted to play pro. You were yeah. focused on soccer, training all the time. Um, were there any times like during that from like four until when you were a teenager, did you think like, oh no, like when you made that jump to AAA, when mm-hmm. you start getting on the bench where you're like, oh, I'm not going to be pro, like, is this going to work? Or like, uh, was it just kind of like, I'm just going to keep trying and playing? You know, um, like, sometimes, like, you know, sometimes, you know, like it happens to every player, you know, you want to quit some, quit sometimes, you think about quitting and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it happens a lot in like when I was young too, because, you know, when, because my dad was really hard on me, you know, mm-hmm. and I know he wanted my best, but sometimes, uh, and I would just want to quit and stop. Yeah. But the next day, you just know I can't. I, I, I love this so much. But a couple of times, I just thought about it. And uh, for example, um, when we were in AAA, mm-hmm. we have like a state, uh, we call it a state uh, selection. Mm-hmm. And I didn't get in it. Like I said, man, like, like there's a lot of people in my team got in it. Mm-hmm. So I was, I was kind of, you know, jealous and oh man, I want to yeah. go so bad in it. And, and uh, why I'm not there. and am I good or not and I just start just doubting yourself but you just go through it yeah 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 it's it's tough I mean I obviously like every kid like goes through those like moments like yeah. that but yeah um and then so walk me through now from like triple a you're playing and then your jump at 17 to the semi-pro level. semi-pro is the yeah. first year of a semi-pro I think I was the youngest in the league really yeah I was the youngest in the league it was really cool, uh, mm-hmm. like because I was playing with uh, a lot of pros that played uh, with the Montreal Impact. And, That's cool. Yeah, uh-huh. and the coach was he was actually the uh, the ex coach of the Montreal Impact. He coached my team, and it was like a really good experience. Mm-hmm. I learned a lot from them, a lot, a lot, a lot. It was when we won that uh, the the league. Uh huh. But like, so sometimes I was young, but it would the coach would like trust me and still put me on the field for a couple of minutes mm-hmm. and I, I would be so, I would be so happy you know just to be on the field with those pros mm-hmm. yeah what was uh what was the team and what was the league like what was it called uh uh P- PLSQ PLSQ uh-huh yeah I, said, I don't in, I don't know in English oh so. yeah that's <laughs> what I gotta realize everything's in French <laughs> um that's crazy though youngest player in the league huh? yeah yeah how was it being like one of the younger smaller guys like did you get pushed around a lot did you like was the level just that much faster and everything yeah yeah of course like it was it was kind of hard at the beginning uh-huh. you know but as a thing like that's what you have to get used to it and just start you know, building and on every day day by day you know mm-hmm. like yeah i give a good first touch yeah, after that yeah okay i need to put more on my body so i will work on that the next day mm-hmm. and stuff and you know, it'll keep going yeah it get better Cause that was my thing, like from like when I was like 13, and I was playing with all kids my age, and they go 14, you enter high school, and then you're playing with like 18 year olds mm-hmm. at the time that are like full grown men, and I was like 100 pounds at age 14, yeah. and I was like, just to realize that oh, I can't just take the ball and dribble and everything, because mm-hmm. these guys are yeah. literally gonna come and like kill me. I have to play faster. It's like yeah. little things like that. Yeah. Um, and you said you, but when you were playing with the AAA team, that you were on the bench a few times. And stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you yeah, work could. during training? Did you become like a consistent starter, and that's how you got the go to yeah. the semi pro job? Exactly. Um, I became a I became a starter, and like you know, like I tried to work hard and harder and harder. And then actually, with the high school program, mm-hmm. it was getting better and better. And uh, with that, people kind of trying to uh, kind of start recognizing me mm-hmm. because some you know some coaches prefer like tall players you know yeah, and yeah big yeah. players and i'm not that kind of guy and i'm small i always been the smallest guy in the team mm-hmm. and you know try to i'm the kind of guy that try to dribble and you know the, the stereotype of a small player yeah yeah and uh, i had to work harder and people start recognizing me and uh, i went to the tryout mm-hmm. for the, the semi-pro and it, it picked me yeah i didn't expect nothing from it but I got lucky, I think. So it was just an open tryout? Yeah, then? open tryout, and I got it. I, I say a lot of times, too, like when it comes to those open tryouts or finding a team, like once you're at the level of like being a semi-pro or at the, you're at the level of being a pro, it, at that point, it's almost, it's more about having a, the right coach that set, sees the right style, that mm-hmm. fits the right program, that needs yeah. the right position. You know, like I always say, like the stars need to align. Obviously, you need to be good enough to be at the yeah. level. But like, 
I'm sure if you would have tried out for other semi-pro teams that were looking for bigger, strong, yeah, fast athletic exactly. players, he would have just brushed you aside, exactly. you know? Yeah, that's why I'm just, maybe I was, uh, is, and the thing is that this coach, a um, uh, couple years ago, mm. uh, he cut me from that uh, state. Really? State, that, that was uh, the same yeah, coach? Yeah, it was the same coach, but oh. this time he picked me, so I said, wow. So Did he remember cool. you? From uh, I think he remembered me, yeah, mm. he remembered me. But uh, yeah, I was. I think I was. I was really lucky. Mm -hmm. and I felt I was lucky, and I said, man, because you know it's like the same coach. You don't expect him to pick you again. Like yeah, he was just gonna cut you again. But actually, going into the trial, did you know it was the same coach? Yeah, I know. Yeah. And so, you, yeah. were you nervous at all? Like, oh, this guy already cut me before. No, you know, like I, I think it's like less pressure. Like, okay, yeah, he sense. cut me. Like, okay, what happens happens. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just here, and if it happens, good. If it not try something else yeah and that must have been a huge confidence boost about how like you've developed too from that program of training yeah. all the time because yes. you're like yeah. it's like that's like huge this same guy who cut me from the state selection team yeah. now wants me for a semi-pro yeah. team exactly yeah that's huge yeah that's awesome um and then so like again literally now from like 14 to 17 did your training change were you still just training and playing all the time like were mm -hmm. you ramping it up like the intensity or it's just like kind of like naturally no, improving. but the thing is that because you know because I was not doing an, another sport, mm -hmm. I was not, uh, I was not, I didn't had like, because I was living in a, in another town, mm -hmm. and I didn't have many friends over there, so I was always go like, in Montreal to play and play and play. So the only thing I had in my mind is play, and that's it. Mm -hmm. that's, Just has nothing else to do. Nothing <laughs> else to do is to play, but play. Like I was play, I would play with my brother, little brother, in front of my house. Uh -huh. And as soon as I have practice, I just take my stuff and, you know, go to practice right after that. Mm. That's it. That's funny. I just kind of like, like kind of like similar is because like my house was like, like Portland is like here. Yeah. And my house was like up in the hills. And before I had a car, there's no way for me to hang out with any of my friends. <laughs> yeah. So all day long, I would just be playing <laughs> with my brother, yeah. like 1v1s, <laughs> doing stupid stuff, playing basketball. We played other sports too, but like there's no choice like, yeah exactly I literally had a, you either stay inside or you go outside and play yeah. but I couldn't like go and hang out with friends because nobody lived like <laughs> anywhere near me yeah. um, and then so just tons so literally from like four years old growing up with it growing up with soccer mm. all the way through 17 to you made that semi-pro team is just constant playing yeah. like almost every day huh? yeah every day and uh, the thing about it is that I'm lucky because my dad my dad loved the game so much you know and mm. And uh, it was so too far to take the bus, so it would bring me every practice, every single practice, every single game, travel with me. And sometimes it's the it would be my brother and me at the same time. Uh huh. So it would take me first and take my brother after and <laughs> go back, take me and just like just go back and forth. You know, yeah. And it was yeah. Like right now, you see it, you say you what you did man. it's like it's crazy so you're really supportive parents for that the whole yeah, process yeah my dad yeah my dad was just uh, was incredible with that uh -huh. yeah. and like you said he pushed you a lot too huh? yeah he pushed me a lot he pushed me a lot mm -hmm. like you know sometimes you're, when you're young <laughs> yeah. that, it, you, you cry about, about <laughs> it and say oh man why are you doing that yeah. but at the end you say okay it's good it was I, good I remember this one training session because um, my dad honestly sounds like the exact same way he drove me everywhere like yeah. if I had a game three hours away he would be yeah. driving me there talking about tactics on the <laughs> way up you know had a bad game the whole three hour ride back I dreaded it because he'd be talking about how, where I need to improve you know doing all the same stuff and I remember one training session in particular it, I think I was 11 or 12 I had just met, went from like recreational level to like a club yeah. level and I was working on I couldn't kick the ball like long balls mm -hmm. at all I couldn't, couldn't get the ball off the ground because my dad didn't know soccer. He literally was learning while yeah. he was playing with me. And so we're like trying to figure it out. Like and there's no YouTube where you yeah. can look at stuff. So like we were, he was like, okay, let's try this now. And we're doing it and we're out there for like an hour and we're going long ball after long ball. I'm so tired and I can't do it. I'm frustrated, I'm like crying, yeah. you know. If I keep trapping the ball down and then hitting it, then I'd be so frustrated, I'd be like cry <laughs> some more. It was so, I remember that, exactly yeah. that feeling of just yeah. being so mad. At, and I was mad at him at the time, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like, why are you making me do this? <laughs> but it's good in the long run. It really yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. It's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now, um, with the semi-pro team at 17, mm -hmm. what was, what did you, how long were you with that team, or what was the next step after that? Because, um, you know, um, at that time, for every kid like, that plays soccer, like, there, there's two options. Mm -hmm. it's you try to go with the, the, the youth uh, national team, like, 
scouts and all this stuff mm -hmm. or you go to United States for college yeah for college and to play soccer like that's the dream of every kid you know because mm -hmm. we didn't we didn't have this opportunity we didn't have, it was not that big before mm -hmm. like, it's getting better now right yeah way better uh -huh. yeah, it's way better now but before it was yeah you know, like with soccer to develop or to go pro you mm -hmm. have to go in the United States mm -hmm. and to college and play and after right after this year after 17 seven no um, maybe a couple, uh, 19 19 19 20 mm-hmm Yeah, I uh, tried for um, some universities, like, sent emails everywhere. Yeah. I'm telling you, like, I, would, I still have them, like, a bunch of them, like, sending email by email to every NCAA, um, NCAA teams. Yeah. But, you know, some tell me, send a video. Yeah. Or I send your resume and everything. I said, man, I don't have a video. And the video is so important, mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. And... Uh, After that, I was I would tell them like I don't have a video or I have a small video or something. It's not that good. It was not that good, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so, uh, the guy that helped me, it was is is my agent now, mm -hmm. or my like it's not my it's not my agent, but it's kind of my coach. Uh -huh. My coach that he would just he help helps me. you get connections. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, stuff. and um, um, you find me in a university in Bridgeport, mm -hmm. but. <laughs> Okay, I found out. I visit everything. I like everything. Mm -hmm. The problem is that I don't speak English. Oh yeah, I, f I forget about <laughs> that. Yeah, and I have to do the SAT <laughs> to go in. Uh, that was the struggle because the SAT is is made for people that speak English only. Yeah, yeah. I did it three times, two times in Montreal, mm -hmm. and because I didn't have the grade, I had to go in uh, in Bridgeport again to do it. So my dad drove me like. Eight hours to go take that ACT again. Wow. And I got the grade. When I got the grade, it was too late to go in. <laughs> so, so, man. Really? Yeah. It was so you finally go got it. Yeah, and it was just like, too late. It was just too late to go in. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> and so that's another thing. Your dad drove you eight hours to yeah, even take the exactly. test. It wasn't like eight hours to go and drop you at the school. It was eight hours just to take the test. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Dang. I, was, I was so mad and like I actually had tears mm -hmm. so man like like I already wanted you know it's like it's my dream yeah he said my, just, my dad just told me oh, like you know it's a man it's like why are you crying yeah yeah, you know, yeah. don't cry you're gonna find another one mm -hmm. <laughs> that's good I, li I like though how like you mentioned two things of like literally what I tell everybody when they want to do they're yeah. like what should I want to be a pro I want to be you know play in college which I, I like literally Emails and highlight video is like the f number yeah. one thing. Yeah. Because it's like what you said, like any email that you send out, the first thing they ask, let me see some film. Yeah. You know? Exactly. And even if you could be the best player in the world, but if you don't have a film to show them, they're just gonna be like, yeah. well, if you can make it here and we yeah. can watch you play, yeah. Yeah. but other than that, we're not interested. Yeah, exactly. But so that's, I, I liked that, like how important the video was. And did you, so you didn't have any, even at the semi pro level, nobody was filming games or anything for you? Uh, Uh, the, the thing is that like I was not playing a lot of minutes yeah so because you're just the young yeah, guy like getting the youngest guy in the team that those guys played pro before so uh -huh. I'm there to back up you know yeah and sometimes I would get some minutes but it's not that much mm -hmm. so and when you do get the minutes it's not like you're the star of the team yeah like, exactly scoring goals you know, and dribbling exactly. people you're just trying to play the sample as much so, you know mm -hmm. you don't want to piss off those, those guys you know so play a pass pass yeah. and, you know move pass do you think do you think it was better than at that age to, to play at the higher level to so you can get the faster speed of play you can get the better environment or do you think that you should have had maybe a year or something where it's like play with a team your own age so you can build up a better highlight video no, and like I actually I think um, I think it was uh, it was better for me to play with uh, with the oldest mm -hmm. like you know the, the smart pro team because the things that even if you're not playing practice you, you learn a lot, a lot in practice mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. a lot a lot like those guys kind of teach you how to move how to ask for the ball yeah like how to run and everything and that coach will help me a lot too tactically and mm -hmm. technically and everything too yeah to play. that makes sense yeah. i mean that it's like i did the same thing where it's like after college mm -hmm. it's like I, i trained with sacramento republic like the yeah. entire nine months at the beginning i was you know when you have the rondos you're stuck in the middle the entire yeah. time that was me <laughs> like i just was struggle but you learn so much yeah, yeah um exactly. but yeah i mean i think it really helped but then at the end of the same time at the end of the year i kind of had the same problem mm -hmm. i would be reaching out to usl teams again mm -hmm. following that and they'd be like where where have you been playing and yeah. i'm like well 
I don't have any film. Yeah. Yeah. But I learned so much. I could develop so fast over those nine months. Um, and then so uh, the other thing is too, emails. Like I love how you were like literally just contact, like you took it upon yourself. Like, oh, if I want my career to be better, yeah. I need to be sending these emails yeah. off. And I'm telling you like. How many emails do you think you sent? <laughs> like, you had to put a number on it. Oh, man. It's like <laughs> I probably like 80, 90 emails. Yeah. Like. And and you say eight or nine, and if and people camera shut off, and if people if they don't think like if you don't think that's that much, you have to realize these are like personalized Mm -hmm. emails that you spend lots of time exactly crafting. Mm -hmm. Like it's not like a oh hey how's it going I want to go to your school sent hey how's it going I want to go it's like you know an hour exactly and you have to kind of make a resume and all this stuff it was it was crazy and you have to answer them sometimes some of them don't answer you but you have to answer all of them to see if they, they have money for you yeah like for the scholarship because school in the united states is really 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 expensive Stupid, yeah. <laughs> it's incredible uh-huh. yeah, like in canada it's not that expensive to go in college mm-hmm. but here uh, when i heard the prices and stuff then you know sometimes because my dad would take care of me and my brother mm-hmm. and you know I would I wouldn't be able to afford like to pay five thousand for the for the year. Mm-hmm. So I had to find a good good scholarship, you know. Yeah. Or just take out yeah. huge loans. Yeah, exactly. Like a lot of Americans do. Yeah. Um, did your brother play too? Was he like going to, wanting to go to college and stuff? No, but I mean, he doesn't take soccer like that. He didn't take soccer that seriously when he was younger. Mm-hmm. Like he just started to take it seriously. So it, I think it's the first year of playing semi pro right now. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. He's still at the level though. Yeah, mean, that's at least, a good at level. Least. Yeah. Um, and then uh, so so what happened with after the SAT? You took the third SAT. It was too late. And then what happened? Uh, I got I got so lucky. Uh huh. Um, my dad knew someone, and I didn't know that league because you know like. You're in Canada, mm-hmm. all you hear about is NCAA, NCAA, NCAA. Yeah. Like, you don't know nothing else. Like, you want to go there. Mm-hmm. But there was the NGCAA. Mm-hmm. And someone knew, uh, my dad knew uh, someone that knew the coach. So, and he just, uh, I, I, like, just like that, I mean, he made me sign. Really? He didn't see me, nothing. He didn't see me play, say, okay, I trust him. So, he made me sign. Ah. Uh. Because I was practicing with my dad, and he was a teammate of my dad. Yeah. So just, like, yeah, just it's, and that's like, you, when you have the word of somebody that you trust, yeah. he's a good player, then you're kind of like, I yeah, trust exactly. him. So he, I, just, I just signed with uh, in the Essex County College in New Jersey. Uh-huh. And uh, that's where it just all started for me. Uh-huh. Okay. Wow. So it's kind of funny. All the work you put in, yeah. the way it worked out is literally just a random yeah, connection. Exactly. And the thing is that for NGCA, you don't need the ACT. Yeah. So was, <laughs> you were, you were yeah. sold, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, and then so when you, because yeah, when you're sending out emails, was it all to D1 schools? D, D1, D2? D1, or? D2s, yeah. Uh-huh. D1, D2s. But you're, you didn't know the NJC, NJCCA, yeah. right? And NGCAA. And, okay, yeah. NGCAA. And uh, I didn't know like other leagues like NAIA, NGCAA. Mm-hmm. I didn't know none of those. Yeah. Luckily, like now, like I'm so jealous of kids now with how many like resources they have Man, right know, it's like for real if you want to be a pro <laughs> you have yeah or want to go to college you have so many stuff you can mm-hmm. have like companies that can help you yeah all these stuff like, make a video for you uh, in, in my time it was not that easy yeah. i know i remember too like even trying to figure out the difference between scholarship regulations or rules with d1 d2 and naia like you had to dig and dig and yeah. dig. You had to literally call people, call the NCAA. Like yeah. I called the NCAA yeah. and I was trying to figure out how, when I could contact the coaches and what the rules were. Because co- like, there's nothing, there wasn't no, like nothing. anything. And the things that for me, it was even harder because the school system mm-hmm. is completely different from the rest of Canada. Mm-hmm. So uh, we have like um, uh, uh, primaire, mm-hmm. uh, secondaire, CJEP. And university, mm-hmm. it was it's completely different. So sometimes I would miss a class to be eligible, so I would just have to, have to take it somewhere. And it was, yeah, it was incredible. So you had such a specialized, little unique education system, mm-hmm. and then the colleges like they probably when you talk to some coaches, they probably don't even know. Like, yeah, like exactly. we don't know what you yeah. need, and we don't even know how. Exactly. So I have to call, and you know, <laughs> you know, you have to call. To and see. it's in English too, huh? Yeah. So we have to like my, my stuff were in French, so I have to <laughs> pay someone to translate all of it uh-huh. and send it again and. It was, so it was you, put in a, you put in a, a ton of work yeah, to try to yeah, get that. Yeah, 
Yeah. Money and money and in time. Uh-huh. Money and time. And but it was a relief when you got that. Uh, what was the school called? Uh, Essex County College. Essex County College. When you yeah. got that to finally like yeah, sign just you. School, yes, it was. It was small. Like it's a small like college. Mm-hmm. And a small, uh, small college, but. How do you call it? It's a community college. Community college, yes, yeah. exactly. Or it's junior college. Yeah, junior college. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's just it's a small thing, but for me, it was so big. You know, yeah. it's so so big. Yeah. To like for kids to have this opportunity, this opportunity at this time, it was almost non-existent. Uh huh. Yeah. And then, um, so you entered when you were twenty, is that right? Or? Yeah. Yeah, twenty. And then, how did the preseason and the first season go with Essex County? Um. Uh, actually, it was it's pretty weird over there because uh, I started as a winger. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, the first season, it was I did pretty good, like almost uh, assist every uh, every game. Wow! It was, it was yeah, it was it was kind of was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. But uh, I didn't I didn't get no prize except for like a first team in my region. Mm-hmm. The second year it was the weirdest uh, year because um, uh, I was playing. Uh, the the center back was not eligible anymore mm-hmm. and the coach just put me center back <laughs> from from winger yeah so from center, uh, winger to center back uh-huh. and I, I felt really comfortable that was weird I felt, <laughs> I, I feel like maybe I knew I knew what they, they, they were thinking because I was a, str- a striker a winger a yeah. winger so I knew what they, they wanted to do or I, with my speed I could just catch up with them yeah and uh, this year I finished All American as a center back and uh, like player of the year in my region. Wow! Yeah, it was it was it was weird as a center back. <laughs> yeah, huh. that's funny. Yeah. It, it's funny that like I bet it's easier too as being like a winger or like more like even in the midfielder. Like I like that's what happened when I moved to right back because I was an attacking player. I moved yeah. to right back and I'm like, wow, everything's yeah, yeah. in front of you. Like center back, everything's in front of you. You exactly. know, you don't have to worry about no, this stuff. nothing behind you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then so you did so second year went really well yeah really well really and, well. and then was this a two year university or is it a two year uh, uh, community college is two years and I had to transfer mm-hmm. and again I was struggling I struggled a lot to find a university even if I finished All American that's crazy my my coach did that didn't have the, no contacts to transfer me somewhere mm-hmm. so uh, again the, the guy that was helping me the coach mm-hmm. like he tried to find some schools and everything and I tried to email, uh, email, like a bunch of uh, universities again. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And I've heard. Uh, I don't know if you heard of the Mid American Nazarene University in Kansas. Yeah. 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 It's a, they play in the NAI. Mm-hmm. And uh, like, actually, like the the guy, I contact the coach just like that. He didn't even he didn't even know the coach. He called the coach and say, yeah, I have a player for you, and he just start talking and say, okay, uh, let me see. Uh, a video mm-hmm. again community college we don't have videos yeah so okay um and the things that that coach i don't know how still i don't know i still don't know how but i think i think sometimes it, it was just crazy just just to pick pick me up like that yeah because it's a big it's a big big like scholarship you know yeah it's a big I, risk I like, yeah it's just okay he finished all american let me just take him mm-hmm. and uh but i had to be eligible for the nai and uh I was missing one class to be eligible, mm-hmm. and uh, what I did is just take a French class. Okay. Of, like you know, I don't know. It's like CLEP test. I don't know if you heard uh-huh. of that. It's like a test when you just get all the credits. Mm-hmm. If you take if you just take one test and you get like six, six or seven credits because mm. I was missing credits. Okay. So it's of course it's gonna be easy for me. It's yeah. French. <laughs> so I just take the test and like. 15 minutes and get all everything all my credits and okay I'm good to go because anyway. <laughs> it's it's a French class for English speakers right? yeah Trying exactly so. and you were just like oh yeah, yeah right. exactly so it was easy I just took yeah, I took in 15 minutes I took French 1 and French 2 <laughs> <laughs> that's funny yeah, so um, that's funny. and then how was so this is too let's go back even on your first year yeah. y- learning English yeah. like how was it at all like walk me through that year oh uh was it hard? Were you going in classes, yeah. and how much did you understand? Uh, I, w- I had to like go to Google Translate so so much. Mm-hmm. Google Translate or find stuff to make to translate for, translate it for me. Sometimes, if I had to write something, 
I would even have to write it in French first mm -hmm. and transfer it in English like with Google Translate yeah. and try to correct the, the, or just ask my friends, can you read this for me just to make sure it's all right because you know, sometimes Google Translate doesn't translate yeah. it correctly. So it was pretty, it was, it was really hard like just to read those stuff. Or Did you come in, were you at like Christian's level, Luca's level, like where? No, I was, I, I was worse. Worse than those? Yeah, worse, worse than worse, Christian? Yeah, yeah. I'm really? You, I was worse. Like my English was pretty bad. <laughs> like, so you literally thing. came in and like, like, did you sit in class or with, with the team and just, it was just nothing? Like you just heard yeah. like maybe a word or two yeah, that you could pick a out? Work, a word or two, but just before that, uh, like just before I knew I was going, so I was trying to like learn, mm -hmm. like or learn a bit, everything and but I was I was struggling, man. Like, yeah. It was it was the hardest hardest thing to overcome. Like you're in school, yeah. in English, and you don't know the language. Mm -hmm. So. It was like, when did you feel like okay, I'm starting to feel like I got a ha handle on this? Like you're understanding class, you're understanding the coaches, you're under you can like talk with your teammates and have um, fun. The thing is that my coach would he, he was Asian, so he could speak Creole. Oh, okay. So I would understand him. Uh -huh. like, and, um, but. Um, when I started to be really comfortable mm -hmm. in English is after after a year. After a year, I started to like, okay. because you know, the only thing, the, everyone is speaking English to you, so you have to understand, you have to learn. Mm -hmm. And with all those exercises you have to do, and I was in a special class mm -hmm. for English. So I, I was kind of, it was hard, but good at the same time. Yeah, yeah, because that's like, I always like, I was talking to Luca mm -hmm. about this, how he's like, it's like when Brazilians come to America, the Brazilians have to speak English, mm -hmm. but when the Americans go to Brazil, speak English. The, all yeah. the Brazilians <laughs> speak English back to them. Like we don't have to learn Portuguese, yeah. and it's it's like easier if you can speak English. But I always am like it's hard to learn languages. Like yeah. when I was over in yeah. Germany, I everybody could speak English. So like if I was like struggling trying to talk, I'd be like I can speak English. Yeah, what do you so, mean? Yeah. So it was like nice at the beginning, but then at the same time, when I really actually wanted to learn it, mm. it was like I wasn't forced to learn it. Yeah, exactly. That much. So, yeah, like me, I was just forced. Like, yeah. yeah. Put me there okay, and try to learn. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. So a year you were felt like, okay, I'm starting to get a hang of this. I can talk. I can yeah. have conversations. Like it's all good conversation. Good. I can. I don't want. I don't have to mumble or you know, mm -hmm. like, just think about my words or like maybe just point. Like say, how do you say that? Or how do you say yeah, this? Yeah. <laughs> Dang, that's crazy. Yeah. Especially school. I could, I could see because I mean I've done it just with soccer, but I can't imagine going to a, a completely different like to go to school and yeah. study in a different language. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Um, and then so how was uh was American Nazarene? What was it called again? Mid American Nazarene University. Uh huh. Yeah. How was that? So the coach took a leap of faith on you. Yeah, it. Uh, thank God, because and it was one of my. It was it was hard at for uh, like at first because you know I don't you don't know the style of what the style of play and mm -hmm. what he wants at the beginning, but I started to pick it up and it was I, I got I got to be starter and everything it was really good, mm -hmm. but um, my second year and the thing is that my first year I had like some French guys that were playing in the team okay that will help me too, because you know like after a second year still not English is not perfect yeah you know, and it will help me, but. That's probably nice to have guys yeah. that can speak French. Yeah, it was just really just a teammate or two when you just want to yeah, have a joke, exactly, you know, yeah, that exactly. only they can understand. They can understand. Exactly, and uh, uh, but the second year went pretty well for me. Uh, I was a uh, right back, mm -hmm. and uh, I got All American over there too. Wow! Again. Yeah, All American, at, uh, All American at the NAI, NAI yeah. level yeah. is like that's yeah, it's, really good. Yeah, it's kind of, it was really good. It's uh -huh. really good, and uh, I got like defensive player of my region, uh -huh. and uh, that was that was about it for. College career, uh huh. Um, and then, uh, how was the level from the semi pro level that you're playing at, mm -hmm. and then going to the junior college and the and the NAIA? How was uh, that? Feel, like, how would you rank them all? I feel like uh, the semi uh, the semi pro was better, than, way better than the NGCA, mm -hmm. I think. But uh, the semi pro was still better than the NAIA, but you know because the things that in the NAIA like there's no. No, uh, not much rules about like pros. Yeah, you know, it could it can play pro before and come <laughs> to the NIA. Yeah, you know like so, I would play with guys that play in uh, in German Germany uh, under under seventeen, mm -hmm. like or Fluminense in Brazil. <laughs> Some guys play in Fluminense like when they were young in the uh -huh. academy, and they just come and play, try to play, and like some play pro actually pro pro. Mm -hmm. So it was it was kind of good. It was a good good level. Wow. And people from the things that 
I don't know if in NCA we have a limit of players out from outside. Yeah, there is. Yeah. yeah. NAA we don't. NAA yeah. we don't. Like there's a college I was playing against is 11 Spanish players <laughs> on the field. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, like, it's crazy. <laughs> Feels like you're like playing yeah. abroad. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. no, I've seen that. I've seen rosters of, of like NAI schools or like some of them, and you literally look at the roster, and it's just like, it's just a foreign. It's just yeah, foreigners exactly. all the way down. Maybe a couple yeah. Americans. Exactly. But like, I I like that though. Like how there's like different options, like NAIA. It's like whatever you need. Like okay, maybe you played pro one year, but now you want to get an education while mm -hmm. you continue to play. Yeah. It's perfect for you. It's perfect. You know? Yes, it's perfect. Yeah. Um. So so you would rank. So the semi pro that you're playing before was the highest. Yeah. Drop down. Low yeah, to the junior yeah. college, but then you, you increased up to the NAIA, but yeah. you still think that's a little bit lower than the, the level you were playing in. Yeah. So that's that's interesting because it's like you must have the game must have slowed down for you a lot, huh? From the semi pro level down to the college level. Uh, from the NGCA, yes, mm -hmm. NGCA was kind of yeah, it was like okay, I thought it was harder, you know, to play in the in the United States. Yeah, because you know, I was kind of. I was I was good, you know. Like I don't I don't want to brag. I don't want to brag. I don't like well, to brag. Obviously, you're yeah, you're good now. Yeah. You're you're the pro, you're pro. I, yeah. I, I like I say, oh okay. I, I was I was kind of good. Like you know, mm -hmm. I could do pretty much what I, what I want. Mm -hmm. I wanted and everything. So sometimes you just pick up stuff that are bad for you. Yeah. You know, like okay, let me dribble one, two, three. Okay, and pass it after. Yeah. yeah but yeah. as soon as I I went back to the like a good higher level, it was hard at the beginning like with the NAIA it was hard at the beginning and after that I just got to start and you know and pick up everything yeah because you have to get used to okay I can't take you know if that when you're getting lazy you know when the ball comes yeah, to you you can exactly. take a bad touch and then settle yeah. it back down yeah. or in the higher exactly. level you get closed yeah exactly yeah um, and then so after your two years so you had, again you start off like on the bench it sounds like at the NAIA and then you got slowly yeah I, like I started like maybe Two three games, mm -hmm. two three games. Sometimes I would be on the bench during the during the the season because I was not playing good sometimes. Mm -hmm. But the majority of the time, and especially in the nationals, I was uh, like all star, and like, you know that's the most important part. Yeah. And and actually in the first year we finished we lost in the final in the nationals. Really? Yeah, it was a pretty good level over wow. there. Wow. Yeah. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then so after the two years there, um, you had again all american at the naa yeah. level um what was the next step after that um i played pdl mm -hmm. you know because it's a comes you know like sometimes like people just want to okay i finish i want to go i like high pro and stuff but uh -huh. you gotta you have to take it step by step that's what my like my coach tell told me because mm -hmm. i was thinking the same too it's like i want to go pro now yeah like i want to go in high level Say, so, but no, I have to take it step by step. So after that uh, college, I went to Ocean City, mm -hmm. Nor'easters. It was was really was really good. You know, we played the academy of uh, Red Bull on the twenty three. We mm -hmm. played like played a bunch of Reading. It was and that's from Philadelphia, mm -hmm. the academy of Philadelphia, and it was pretty a pretty good level. You know, because you mix NAI and NCAA players. Yeah, and so you see what the other level is really, and. Uh, Right after that, after that Ocean City, um, I was waiting for a couple of uh, weeks mm -hmm. to go to India because my 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 coach found something for me in India. Mm, wow! Yeah, <laughs> it was it was something in, and it was was pretty big for me. You know, we go all the way there and yeah, it was, it was crazy. <laughs> so I was waiting, but uh, I, unlucky again, I was just they refused my visa. Okay. But yeah, because you know it was so complicated to get my visa. I just and uh, how I went there uh -huh. is from a tourist visa to train with them. Okay. Yeah, so I stayed for a couple. Of, I stayed for a couple of months over there, like trying to figure out how can I get my visa. Mm -hmm. But nothing. But I still played with the first team and played some games with them mm -hmm. and everything. It was it was a pretty good what, level. What there. was the what level was it? Uh, was uh, in uh, in India? It yes, was, in India. Uh, first division. It okay. Was first division. It was uh, Minerva Punjab. Uh huh. It, yeah, but it's really the life is really different. Well, is that there. the is that the Indian Super League? The no, ISA? because the thing is that in India we have they have like two. Yeah, they two have two first, first divisions. Yeah, so I'm um, we I was in the other one. Okay. Yeah. Minerva Punjab. Yeah. That's that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was it was it, the way people live over there is completely completely different yeah. from here. Yeah. 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 It was that's. That's awesome. Um, all right, and then how was the so how was the let's go back. How was the PDL level compared to the NAI level and the semi pro level we played in Canada? 
Um, was that higher? I think it was. I think the. But like when I because I think the smart pro got better right now. Like if I play go so good play smart pro, the, the level would be higher. Mm. But from where I was, uh, to uh, to the PDL I was playing, the PDL was I think was better. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and then so you said you were playing with like NCAA like probably like D one yeah, players and yeah, stuff. D one players. How did you feel like you stacked up with with, with those guys? Um, it was the speed of play faster. Where they, did you see it was like more, almost like with the NCAA D one players was like a little bit American like athletic. More? No, I think I think I actually think it was uh, it was the same. Really? I think it was the same. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's me or I don't know, but just I feel like it's, it's the same. I could play with them yeah. easily and play normal, you know. And, and again, at the beginning, I was on the bench. Yeah. And just worked my way through to go to go into starting. Sounds like a common theme. Yeah. Huh? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, it's like. Yeah. That's good, um, and I, I'm always interested about that. Like, cause I always I'm curious to see people's experience from like different levels and how they always stack up and yeah. stuff. Cause obviously it varies team by team, and everybody has different experiences. Yeah. But it's just cool to hear. Um, and then, uh, were you playing right back again for the PDL team? Yes, I was playing right back. Uh -huh. Right back. Okay. That's where and that's where I met uh, Fred and Akil. Okay. Yeah, I was playing with them. <laughs> that's yeah. that's all. Yeah. Fred and Akil. How how was playing with those guys? Um, it was a good. It was good. It was a good experience. Mm -hmm. It was a good experience, and, uh, and you know, like I was so like Akil was telling me stories. Mm -hmm. He said, "Whoa, man, you went through a lot. Yeah, you went through a lot." Mm -hmm. And uh, it was it was kind of crazy for me, but playing with a guy that got draft in Orlando. Yeah, for Orlando, and it was great, great, pretty good. And and Fred and me, we had that kind of connection, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, Both being from yeah, Haiti. Yeah, from Haiti, we could speak Creole and everything, and mm -hmm. you know we're always joking around. And on the field, it was a bit the same too. Like we have some stuff. We just pass one two, one two. We just pass the ball to each other, and mm -hmm. it was kind of cool. Yeah, that's awesome. It's uh, it's really cool to see. I always like it when people like I, I've said this before on like the podcast, but I always imagine like every teammate's like journey is like a straight line. Yeah. And sometimes they'll like intersect. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. It's like uh, like randomly. Like uh, for example, even. Um, like I can't even I, nothing like Jeff. Jeff mm -hmm. it literally like him. He was playing over in Portugal with Janu, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. And then like uh, Jeff met Anthony in France together. Mm -hmm. It's just like crazy. It's crazy. Hell yeah. yeah. And it's it's really it's such a small world. Mm -hmm. Um. And then so, and then so it, let's go to India now. So you literally so you flew to India on a tourist visa, huh? Yeah. Because tourist you just visa. knew that this team was willing to take you in. Yeah. And I have the contract and everything. I'm okay. just waiting for the papers to come. Wow. I have the contract. They told me like everything you're gonna live there and everything. Like I have everything. Was it, was it a decent contract? Like yeah, that? it was a good contract. It was a pretty good contract. Yeah, like, you don't have to say numbers. <laughs> you, have to, you have to like you live really good. You know, you can save money mm -hmm. and everything, and they paying for your food wow. and housing. So mm -hmm. the money you get, you, you can save it. Mm -hmm. And then so, I'm always, that's crazy because literally when I try to think of like in my head. Like, what is the most opposite country to America? Like, India is one of the countries I feel like is, like, what you said, like, it's just completely different lifestyle. Yeah. How was the culture shock? You land there, it was just, Man. were you, like... Like, um, at first, I, was, uh, I, can't, I land there. Uh -huh. No Wi-Fi in the airport. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I have to ask people, can I pick your phone and everything like that? And uh, they lost my luggage, too. <laughs> they lost my luggage. So I was there for, like, for a couple of weeks without, without clothes. Or, I always have my soccer stuff on yeah, me, yeah. so I can't lose it. Mm -hmm. But my clothes and everything. And at first, I get out of the airport. Mm -hmm. I say, where am I? Like, I see cows, cows on the highway, on the highway, just like that. So, mm -hmm. Wow, what's going on? Like, <laughs> but, and the people, like, you know, like, it's way different. Like, the way they drive in, it's like, you yeah. go left or go right. Like, you don't care, you know? You <laughs> it's just, like the movie. It's literally what you yeah, see in, like, a movie. You honk and you just go. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> it was crazy. And uh, Were you super excited? Like, what were you feeling? Were you just excited about the opportunity? Were you yeah, nervous at all? I was excited. No, I was I was more excited, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, like, I had to be confident and be excited about it. But, uh, like, the way people live there, I don't know, like... Maybe it's like because I was in Punjab, mm -hmm. it's maybe a, a smaller part in India, but like me, I couldn't, I couldn't like, it was too, too like different. Uh -huh. you know, it was too different the way, because the way you use the bathroom, 
yeah. the way you. It's just uh, a hole, right? Yeah, and I know it's not a hole. It's like it's a it's a bathroom, but the things that uh, you have to take your shower every time, right after you go to the bathroom. Oh, yeah, really? Right after you go because it was kind of yeah, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Uh-huh. But um, or the food, I can't, I couldn't eat the food. Mm, I don't know why. Get sick? Yeah, I would get sick all the time. Huh. So I have to go. I had to go to KFC. <laughs> they had to go to KFC to eat something. Is that the only food you could yeah. handle? Yeah. The only wow. food I could handle. So did you like it or were you just kinda like I liked I liked the experience. Yeah. But to stay a whole season there yeah. I don't think I would So it was make like it. it was a blessing in disguise that your visa didn't work out. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like so every everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Like I really liked the people over there and everything, like and you know that, that we didn't have I didn't have Wi-Fi where I was, mm-hmm. so, so this guy will always give me his data to, uh-huh. to talk and to, to my to my to my family and friends, and it was like it's a good experience, mm-hmm. but the way like it was over there, yeah, it was hard. It was yeah. hard for me. Moses kind of talked about that when he was in Egypt. Mm-hmm. He had a really bad living situation when he was yeah. on trial over in like Egypt, like cockroaches on the floor and all this oh. stuff and. Kind of like obviously you can go to India and there's amazing places. You can yeah. go to Egypt and there's amazing places. Yeah, exactly. But like just in your your experience there, exactly. wasn't yeah. it? It wasn't ideal. Um, how was the level of play? How was the training and everything? It was really hard. I've never never talked to anybody. Actually, I knew one person, but I didn't talk to him about how the level was or anything. I was. It was pretty hard. Uh huh. Physically, really hard. Uh huh. F- I came out from the plane, took my stuff. First thing I had to do is a beep test. <laughs> Yeah, beep test straight, uh, and uh, this team were they would do beep test for fitness. So every week, you had wow. to do, or sometimes twice a week, you had to do the beep test. So, man, like I was fit, you know. Yeah. At the end, I was really fit, but it was kind of really exhausting on your body. Like mm-hmm. it was really hard on your body, and the uh, level of play. Like it's really like technical short passes, mm-hmm. short passes. They they don't like to kick the ball. It's mm-hmm. like short, 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 and you in just. Try to dribble, short, short, short. You try to dribble, but and uh, like people, oh, I think people they are really technical because the fields are not that great. Yeah. Like the, tr- the my training field was not that great, so you know, like people were technical and everything. And uh, and you felt like you fit like right in with the team though, like playing wise and in the locker room. Uh, playing wise, yes. Mm-hmm. I feel like uh, I was uh, I was really I was really decent like I, because they, they kind of had my style of play mm-hmm. like I had their style of play too and uh, but in the locker room uh, that's where it kind of got hard because um, and that's, that's, the, that's the thing sometimes like you're you're from outside you know yeah and people don't want you to come in sometimes and there's some players that uh, would tra- like there's a guy that would that like, was from Canada actually but it's from any was from Canada that mm-hmm. would translate something that Another player would tell me, tell about me, say, oh, "Don't give him the ball. He's an outsider. You know, he's gonna take our spot." Yeah. So it's kind of hard to make you, like add sometimes to yell or just take the ball away from another guy just to, to get the ball on uh-huh. the field. You know. Yeah, so I've I've hard. heard about that in some teams or some countries that have that like yeah. very. I mean, obviously, because if you're coming, you 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 kind of are. You're coming in and taking a spot, yeah. but at the same time, I think that like. Your goals as a team, as a person on a team, is to make the team better. Mm-hmm. You know, so like yeah. if someone came in my team, and like they were like, even if they're going to take a spot of somebody else's on the team, mm-hmm. but they were ten times better, it's kind of like, well, yeah, you know, yeah. That's the business, you exactly, know. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, you know? and I think it's kind of wrong for people to like, oh, don't pass on the ball. Exactly. Yeah, it is yeah. wrong. Like it's, I was some so frustrated sometimes, yeah. but you know you gotta deal with it uh-huh. you gotta deal with it it's not, it's not every player it's because there are a lot of players that were really cool with mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. but this guy particularly like he didn't want to give me the ball at all I, I when I was in uh, Germany almost all of my trials were really like a good experience mm-hmm. uh, really good people welcomed me in the locker mm-hmm. room people were super nice people passed me the ball I was playing there was one team Rolt Weiss Frankfurt I mm-hmm. think or something I don't it might be wrong <laughs> I might be offending some people <laughs> but uh, there's this team, like literally, like full on, they made me look like they intentionally would go out of their way to make me look bad. Yeah, yeah. Like there was this, you know, those drills. Where it's like where two two people are on the post mm-hmm. and you go out and it's like a three v two. So I was in line. And I'm like third in line, yeah. 
And when they were like, they were talking, speaking in German, I couldn't understand anything. And then immediately, right when the like the guy, the first guys are about to run on the post, these two guys go and get a drink of water. And so I'm like, I like look and I start to go. And then like, then I was like kind of pushed and the guy behind me pushes me. I get yelled at, screamed out, like, you need to be out there. I'm like, I was third in line, you know? Yeah. Like they intentionally had planned it. Yeah. And I'm like, and like wouldn't pass me the ball, like literally wide open and they'd rather lose it. It's just frustrating because, yeah. you know, like you, you travel all the way there for that and you can't even touch the ball, you know? Mm -hmm. How long were you there in India? Uh, for a couple of months. Actually, um, from October to December. Okay. October to December, I was wow. there and practicing and like trying to play mm -hmm. everything, try to get my visa done. And uh, and you got how did you get the opportunity? Like my 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 coach slash agent. Okay, the same guy. The yeah, same the guy same the guy. Time. is just you know he helped me you know, mm -hmm. to to find that that club. And then why didn't why didn't your visa work out? Do you know? That's a good. That's a good question. <laughs> I still don't know. Like I was, I kept asking and everything, and you know, usually like you're from Canada, you know, like it's yeah. easier. Yeah. But I still don't know from that day. Huh. That's interesting, because obviously, I mean, if it's you think like one of the f first division in India, you think obviously there's foreign players. Yeah. It's weird that it, it wouldn't work out, but um, like we said, kind of you don't know if you could have handled the yeah. full season there. Yeah, exactly. Because um, I was sick too. I was too sick. Yeah. Sometimes I would just be so sick. It's incredible. <laughs> that sounds terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but it, I, like you said, good experience though. Yeah, to it experience was a good that. experience. Um, and then so after India, did you fly back to Canada? What was after India? So now it's like it's a, it's like yeah. the start of the new year, right? Yeah. What right. year is this now? Like going um, in. Was it 2018? 18? Yeah. Okay. It's 2018, and um, uh, I came back to Canada. And uh, I found right away. I found uh, something in uh, Faroe Islands mm -hmm. uh, in Europe. I went over there uh, with uh, train with zero seven investor. Uh huh. Try trying out. Uh, things didn't work out, and uh, another team took me. It was a second division, mm -hmm. and it was a B seventy one, and they signed me. And like from that from that day, I just start playing. And uh, how did it feel signing your first because a pro contract? Right? Yeah, it was yeah, it was I was relieved. Uh -huh. And it was it was kind of, it was still a good you know a good contract. You know it was decent, and I could even work as a coach for the mm -hmm. kids. So it was really cool. And uh, I just I just felt so relieved that I could sign a contract. That's, I need to sign a contract. It's so yeah. funny that you say that too. Yeah. Like you say relieved. Yeah. Because like obviously I mean I think you're like my fourteenth guest now on the podcast. Yeah. And obviously, I talk all the time about what it feels like to go through contracts, mm -hmm. and relief is the number one thing people <laughs> say. You would think as a kid, it's more you'd be happy, excited, yeah. like it's a party. Mm -hmm. But every pro I've ever talked to, ninety at least ninety percent of them say it was a weight off my shoulders. It's yeah, like I finally yeah. could breathe. I, like I finally, all this work had paid off yeah, because no, it's not sure. like a party because it's like you work at it for so long. You're in India, you're doing all this stuff. When you yeah. finally do it, it's not like yeah, it's like. <sighs> yeah, finally exactly yeah and, and the thing about it is that you know you travel but you pay your own flights mm -hmm. you know you have to travel like the team doesn't know you so you have to pay your own flights yeah and i'm a student just came in, coming out from like coming out like i just graduated so i'm not rich yeah yeah so i have to find a way to pay those tickets and those yeah. flights and it's pretty expensive you know yeah so because yeah, you're not was, like you're not we're, you know we're not EPL players they're like no. getting <laughs> private jets flown around <laughs> not exactly that's so funny that you said relieved you said it twice too I was like look I always look for that um, and then so and then so I mean the Fro Islands is a very very small community yeah. of islands it's yeah. tiny it's tiny, it's tiny. Yeah. how is it being in that tiny little island set up you know I was I was I was kind of surprised now they don't they don't speak my like angle like they don't speak English they have their own language mm -hmm. but some of them can speak English pretty well, mm -hmm. and it was pretty cool. Like people were really, really friendly over there. Yeah, like, it's like it's not. I'm gonna say not gonna say totally the opposite of India, mm -hmm. but none of those players were like bad to me. You know, yeah. they were all telling me like, "Oh, good job," or "You're really good," and mm -hmm. stuff. Like, keep going, passing me the ball. That was really cool. I, I was really, really cool. Yeah, and I think it's kind of like an island community. You know, like any yeah. any island community is kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, like New Zealand was really like that and, and like everywhere I've been where it's like that is like super mm -hmm. like accepting smaller communities and stuff. Yeah. 
cold though, huh? Oh, was, <laughs> there's no summer over there. Because <laughs> you, you no went there in like what, February? Is yeah, that February? And uh, it was incredible. Um, I went to, with the first team I tried, I was trying out, I went to Denmark. Uh -huh. um, I think I still have that picture, like they had to take the, like how we call, call it in English, like you know the car that took off the snow. Oh, snowplow? The snow, yeah, yeah, and take off the snow from the field. <laughs> Because it was so much snow, we couldn't even like play, <laughs> on it, so we had to take the snow off. Yeah, it was so cold. When I was in Iceland, they had the fields that would have like the water yeah. heating yeah. below it. That yeah. was nice. Like yeah. you could feel it, like yeah, warmer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but me no. Like, Denmark <laughs> was just you just play, man. You gotta deal with it. Uh huh. Why, why were you in Denmark? Was it like a preseason thing? Yeah, preseason. Okay. Like they had the preseason and everything. So. And how was uh, um. It's, it, how was it being on one of the because like on the on your team there mm -hmm. the second division it's it's probably like not all the guys are fully professional right like everybody's got uh, other yeah, jobs and not, stuff yeah some some of them are, are at jobs some uh -huh. not fully it's not fully professional uh -huh. yeah. but um you were fully professional contract yeah. obviously over there yeah. how was that though being on a team where it was like that like because I've had that before mm -hmm. with many teams how was that like having some teammates that were still in school having other jobs like did you like that did you feel more lonely or. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes I was I would feel lonely, mm -hmm. you know, because obviously uh, you don't speak the language. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like sometimes I would just bother people to make them translate for me <laughs> and stuff, and or maybe just try like to make friends, kind of stuff. You know, so you feel lonely over there because you're far from your family, yeah, and everything. And uh, when uh, when you just deal with like all the only thing you have is soccer over there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, and and the things that that would make help me a lot is coaching. Mm -hmm. I pass the time, and okay, I'm going. I'm going to coach, mm -hmm. and uh, they gave me a car, so I would drive a bit everywhere. Oh yeah, not, not to get bored, you know. And, and it was a manual car. That's where I uh, I learned how to drive manual. Oh yeah, it's kind of it's kind of cool right now. <laughs> I love that. And uh, I bet the kids loved having like a, a foreigner come over. Yeah, and, like, yeah. They, they, uh, I hope I hope they love me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope. So. <laughs> I hope. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, but to deal with uh, those guys that were not fully pro, mm -hmm. uh, it was. I think some some of them would not take it as serious as yeah. you think they would. You know, like for me, like I would. This is my life. You know, yeah. it's my job, like real job. But some of them, like, yeah. But I have to think about my school. You know, my school work. Mm -hmm. So I might not come. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And you're like, what do you mean you're not yeah, gonna come? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, no, it's literally the same exact thing. When I was yeah. in Germany and New Zealand, I was in the same exact kind of the boat where you have like a couple guys that are pro, a couple guys that take it seriously but aren't pro that want to get to that mm -hmm. level, and you have a lot of guys that are. That's not my. It's just I'm doing this for fun, and yeah. you're like, yes, yeah. like, you're. Exactly. What do you mean? There's nine guys at training today. Like I'd be so mad, and I, but I had to realize like this is my life, but this is not like this. Not their yeah. life. Yeah. Um. How how big was the like the how far could you drive? Like how long was it to get? Like I'm trying to get like the, the size of the island. How could you drive to the other side of the island? Or? Yeah, I could drive. How, yeah. how far? <laughs> I mean, from my island because it is a, like a lot of islands. Like, yeah. And my island is like thirty minutes. So you just go. Wow. You just go and uh, to go downtown, you have to take a a ferry. Uh huh. So it's on a different island. To yeah. This downtown. Yeah. So downtown is a different island. So you have mm -hmm. to put your car in a ferry and go. Yeah. Well, how probably. how big was downtown? Like how many was it? Just well, a few blocks. You could walk it. You could you could walk it. Actually. You <laughs> could walk through downtown. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was it was pretty. Did was you pretty like cool. that small? It was like a. It almost seems like it's like a fantasy world. Like, did you like having that small? Did it get old after a while? Uh, that's the thing. As as soon as, as, soon as you come there, mm -hmm. it's so beautiful. Yeah, it's I've seen pictures. So it looks amazing. It's incredible. Like uh -huh. the views and everything. Yeah, but. When you're alone, yeah, and you see this thing, this thing every day, yeah, so, man, you get bored. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just get bored. You say, oh, okay, okay, yeah, never mind. Like, That's exactly what I expect because it's like it, anywhere you go, like same thing mm -hmm. with India. You get there and you're so excited, you yeah. know. But like, after a while, the beautiful views or the exotic food or like being somewhere different, like at that point, you're like, I just I don't like this yeah. anymore. <laughs> like obviously, it's beautiful. You're still in the Faroe Islands. You're looking at this yeah. beautiful scenery, but like. I mean, what what did you do for besides coaching? What did you do for fun to pass the time? Not, not much. Not, not not a lot. Like uh, I would just maybe go. Sometimes I would go out with like some of my teammates mm -hmm. and everything. But yeah. 
Is there how many bars are there in the in the town? In my island was one. One bar. One bar. <laughs> Everyone goes one bar. How many people? How many people were in the, the? Is it a city? A town? What do you call it? A town. A town. Village. Town. Yeah, a village. A village. Town. How many people were in the village? Uh, couple hundreds. Yeah, a couple. So everybody hundreds. knew everybody. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, <laughs> everyone knows everybody. Like. Like everyone knew my name before I met them. You know? <laughs> yes, like they all talk. Yeah, yeah, there's a guy there. His name is this Friendsly. And like, so you would yeah. you would walk in like, oh, you must be Friendsly. Yeah, exactly. Huh. Was, oh, hey, you this a new player. Uh, so, yeah, that's, yeah, cool. I can see pros and cons to yeah. both to that. Yeah. Um. So you were there for the full season. Full season. Yeah. How'd that season go playing there? Actually, again, um, I was there for the full season, but mm-hmm. I had problem with my papers. Visa, really? Again, so I had to wait. Uh, because this the <coughs> the club didn't want to like sign me pro at the beginning. Yeah, they wanted me to work and uh, you know and uh, and play. But at at the end, like they just signed me pro. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had to wait until the window opens. So I was just training with them, training with them, and I had to wait until the window opens to uh-huh. start playing. Oh, uh-huh. what's what's going on with your visa papers? I don't know, man. I like after, because the things that they. They decided to sign me pro too late, mm. so. So you missed the first window. Yeah, I've missed the first window, so mm. I had to wait again. So when you when you when it worked out, you're finally playing with the team now. Yeah, it I went well. Play. Yeah, it went well. Like everything went well. Uh, playing right back again, or? Uh, I was playing a, as a defensive mid uh-huh. and a right back. Okay. Sometimes I defensive, sometimes I was, they wanted to put me as a winger too. Sometimes I was playing a winger. Mm. So it's kind of like wherever they needed you. Yeah, exactly. How was the level of that compared to India? I think the Indian level is better. Mm-hmm. I think the Indian, in India it was better, the level. But um, it's way more physical over there. In, in Faroe Islands? Yes, way more. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's, it's really, really physical. I think I, got, I dislocated my shoulder two times over there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Um, and then so after that season, now it's like what, October, November? Yeah, October, Oct- uh, like the end of October, November. Uh-huh. And... Uh, that's the stressful part, you know. That's the stressful. Like you don't know what you're gonna do after. Every year, it's, yeah. It's like it's so stressful. <laughs> yeah. So like you talk, keep talking to your agent, what's going on, what's mm-hmm. happening, and everything. And sometimes you feel like you're annoying. Oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. <laughs> and uh, I'm just waiting, waiting, and uh, uh, my coach slash agent kind of have some offers for me, mm-hmm. and I uh, decided to to come here. Mm-hmm. For uh, were were like the other offers in the USL or, the, or? Uh, in the Canadian league in the in okay. USL and still in the Faroe Islands too. Oh, okay, yeah. with first division teams in there, or again uh, with second division. Yeah, teams? first division and the second division too. Okay, and so why did you ch- why did you end up choosing the Roughnecks over like a CPL team or the team over in the first division of the um, Faroe Islands? Because Faroe Islands, I feel like you know one season was enough. Yeah, I was yeah. just too far from my family mm-hmm. and friends feel a little isolated out yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was like kind of, I was feel bored, would feel bored sometimes. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, you know, you know this, your cell is like, you have this in your resume, mm-hmm. it's a good thing, you know. Mm-hmm. The CPL just started mm-hmm. and like, and you wanted to, you want to see what's going to happen over there first, first year and to see if it's going to be good and you, you like, maybe, okay, next year I will go. Yeah. But USL, like, USL is always a big opportunity for me to yeah. just play here and have this in my resume. Yeah, the USL Championships is yeah. this established league. Yeah. It looks really, it's, I mean, it's a, prof- it's a really professional league. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so and how are you liking, the, uh, the offseason is so stressful, huh? Yeah. I've been through that like yes. five or six oh, times now. Yeah. Every And it doesn't get better, honestly, it does not get better any <laughs> year, bro. I swear, the only time it was good for me was 2016 to 2017 from uh, Orange County Blues to St. Yeah. Louis because as soon as the season ended with yeah, Orange County just, Blues yeah, I was straight. contacted by St. Louis yeah. and so like literally it was like I had a date I was like oh I was on top of the world <laughs> but other than that one year it's been stress stress oh, stress um, <laughs> it wears you down though no, it wears you down for sure yeah, um, and then so how how was uh, and then didn't you have visa problems here too yeah, I was waiting for my visa actually here <laughs> so yeah I was, like, I was waiting that's why I, I missed the, all the preseason yeah I missed all the preseason and I came here late. Because you got here in like March? Was it end of February or March? End of February, I think. Uh-huh. End of February, yeah. Like and we started at the beginning of Jan- or end of January. It was like January 24th yeah. or something. Exactly. Yeah. So, so is it just visa? What, again, do you know? Or is it? Um, no, I was just waiting for. Because I think I, 
you know, I think there was a sh- the government shutdown. Oh yeah. And it just kind of think I'm kind messed up with my papers. So it's gotten lucky. Yeah. Uh huh. And then so now, how uh, how's been training and playing and everything for the Roughnecks? How's like how's the this league now compared to other leagues you've been and, and yeah, experienced? It's, it's it's way it's way better. Uh-huh. It's way better. Like the quality of play, you know. Uh, again, I had to get adjusted at the beginning. I was enough. <laughs> I think I feel like I feel like this from from the beginning to now. Right now, uh-huh. there's a big difference with me. Mm-hmm. Like, like you know, I improve, I improve a bit day by day, and uh, you know, and because I miss the preseason, you know, I'm kind of late from you guys. Yeah, you guys all fit running, and me, I'm just catching my bread and everything. So. Was I, hard. I remember before you even came, I remember talking to somebody because we kind of knew that like, oh, France is not here because he didn't have his visa. Same yeah. with like Christian came late as well. And it was like, I, I remember talking to someone like, man, that would suck. Like, you miss all of like the introductory little part where it like yeah. starts slow, ramps up, ramps up, and you're coming at like the peak after a month of like yeah. hard fitness and training. It's yeah. rough. Yeah, it is. Um, but yeah, uh, how about the physicality between here and like, because the, the Faroe Islands are pretty <laughs> physical. Because I mean, we have a pretty physical team. Yeah. Um, I mean, because the things like it's kind of the mentality is kind of different. Mm-hmm. Like during games, it's really, really like really physical, but not in not really in practice. Yeah, trainings here are pretty crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. practice here you just go hundred, and uh, <laughs> games you go hundred. Yeah, you know, it is. Uh, this is definitely the most physical team I've been on in trainings. Yeah, because I mean, other places it's been. I mean, it's still physical mm-hmm. even compared to other leagues I've been in around yeah. the world, but. This is the USL like is definitely physical even in trainings, but this is definitely the most physical. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was pretty physical. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. Um, and then so now, uh, people always ask. They say I always want me to ask like about goals, but then like and they're like, where do you want to play next year? But the, uh, we've talked about it. You mm-hmm. literally, well, you said you just don't know. Yeah, I just don't know. We and just I, don't know. And so I always, whenever I ask that question, people are always like, I don't know. Yeah. I want to. We all have goals to play at the highest level possible. Exactly. But it's always like you have to focus on the short term right now. Right now, and just try to like build up from from yesterday. You know, mm-hmm. try try to keep improving and see what's gonna happen after. Yeah. Yeah. And then now I'm gonna ask just three questions, mm-hmm. and then uh, then I'll be it for the podcast. Um, first question though is when was the absolute highest, the best moment about your entire career? And the national team. National for team. Sure playing for the national team mm-hmm. but being on the bench for the national team was the best thing ever uh-huh. for me was it who was it against Canada no it was a it was a the preparation for the gold cup okay and they played against a, a Montreal impact mm-hmm. so it was it was just even if it was like a, not an international game I just felt like it was you know when you have those kind of moments you feel like man I'm reaching my goals you know yeah, like yeah I'm yeah. getting closer yeah. yeah, I always get goosebumps when everybody talks about that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's so sick because it's like even like it's like little moments too that you won't um, that you don't realize that like will hit you weird. You mm-hmm. know, like even when you're playing, like that. My biggest moment was um, my very first game. It was just an exhibition game against mm-hmm. Atlas when I was with mm-hmm. Sacramento Republic. But I remember and the Republic had this wall almost behind like the the goal. You know, called, like Bruce and Dortmund, but like yeah. way smaller. Yeah. And they have like the drums going. I remember there's one corner kick. I was like, wow. I did it like I have like with the yeah. drums going I don't know it's the drums I remember distinctly as like being yeah. the thing I wanted to get but it's like cool it's like be on the bench there and be like wow it's like it's it's happening what you like mm-hmm. envision yeah um, now on the opposite the exact flip side when was the absolute lowest part of your career man I have a lot of them yeah. I have a lot of them uh, I think when I was the closest to quit was uh, when my st- my study and workout went in- with India. Mm-hmm. I was the closest to quit because, you know, uh, you just think about, because when you finish college, you think about your future now. You mm-hmm. know, you have to start your life. Uh, are you going to still play soccer or run after a ball all the time? Mm-hmm. Or are you going to have to find a job because you need money, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's the thing that was the closest time I was just ready to quit. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it didn't work out, and yeah. like you, like I, I don't want to say the experience. I mean, it sounds like a very good experience, but there's also a lot of cons to the experience, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then like, and if which I don't know, whenever that stuff happens, you have so much anticipation, so much excitement to go somewhere, and it fails. Mm-hmm. It really, really hits you. Cause yeah. it's Iceland, it didn't work out for me in Iceland. Yeah. I was the same way. I was like, I want to quit. This yeah. is why am I doing this? Exactly. You know, and that's that's the the biggest part is that. 
like you know have that they have that pressure you graduated mm -hmm. or you finished school what I'm gonna do next yeah like I need to I need to help my family you know or I need to get some money yeah and uh, I do I, am I gonna still run after a ball for for a couple of years and like that's yeah. gonna that's the hardest part I think mm -hmm. um, I, I would get the question of like when I came back or after I was training with Sacramento I still hadn't signed a contract I'm like 22 at this point mm -hmm. I remember like one parent when I was back home in Portland mm -hmm. working out in the gym so you still uh, trying to do this whole professional thing? Are you still making those <laughs> yeah. videos on YouTube? And at that point, I had like 800 subscribers on YouTube or something. And I was just like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> still still trying. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard. Some like I'm lucky. The thing is that I'm really lucky that I had my dad because mm -hmm. he, he didn't let me quit. Even and after I, India? Yeah, he didn't let me quit. Like, he just kept going at me and just tell me, go train or yeah. something like that. Go train or going to pay rent. <laughs> so, I prefer to train. My dad did the same thing. The same thing. Literally, after Germany, after I, like whenever I'd say that, same thing. It's yeah. like, okay, well, if you quit, it's a good, get a yeah, job. Exactly. And I was like, screw that. <laughs> I don't want to get a job. Yeah. That's so funny. Ex same exact thing. Yeah, so. um, that's awesome. That's really good. Your dad sounds like he's really like a good um, supportive force yeah. in your life. Yeah, he was. He is, he is still. Mm -hmm. still. And um, what about, uh, oh, my last question now. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have any piece of advice? I mean, a lot of people that want to play pro are watching this video. Do you have any piece of advice for um, for them? As well as the same thing, if you could give a piece of advice to your younger self. Uh, you know, I think it would be uh, be around the people that support you. Mm -hmm. Like Because I have, a, I have a lot of people that, yeah, you're going to do this still. Or mm -hmm. you're going to play soccer again. Like You have to start a job. You have to start your life. Like be around people that really like appreciate you, and push you. Mm -hmm. Don't quit. And uh, to like don't quit. And I had another one. Was the other one? Um, don't. Uh, what was the other one? I had the, the idea. Like uh -huh. okay, what did I say? Like be, be around people to support you. Don't quit. Don't quit. And uh, what was the other one? Okay, but so. Uh, I lost my idea. You lost your train of thought. Yeah. yeah. What about what about at you going back to your se at age seventeen? What, what would you oh. tell him? Hey, same just, thing. Yeah, same. To keep going, mm -hmm. just keep going, because uh, you never know what's gonna happen. It can be like everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. If you don't get this door closed, if if this door is closed, there's another one open. Yeah. So yeah. just. Keep going. There's a lot of teams out there in the world. Yeah, right? exactly. You know, you know, you never know what's gonna happen. I never, I would never think I would end up in Faroe Islands yeah. or India. Yeah. Right? Oh, never in my whole life. Or Tulsa. Yeah. Or Tulsa. Yeah. Actually, you never know. I know. It's it's cool. All right. Well, anything else you want to say? Anything else? Uh, no. That's pretty it. Uh, uh, L. Yeah. When the because uh, I was a fan of you. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, when. When you sign in Tulsa, I say, "Whoa, I'm gonna <laughs> play with this guy." It's <laughs> funny. Yeah, I was watching all the videos and everything. So that's that's awesome. Yeah. When did when did you when did you start? Um, I was started. Um, I think um, right before India. Okay. Right before India, like I was, you know, only watch you watch stuff in YouTube and mm -hmm. see it was like in soccer stuff and say, "Oh man, like let me watch his videos and see all the uh, all the things you go through." Yeah. And I see, say, oh, wow. Okay, That's let me cool. just see that. And, you know, it's an example of what, what's going to be the pro life. Yeah. So, yeah. So try to make it, like, realistic. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the ups and the downs. That's cool, though. That's yeah. right. You know who else had, had told me that over the mm -hmm. podcast that like, were uh, watching my videos? Mm -hmm. Rodrigo. Yeah. As well. Rodrigo. <laughs> yeah, and then DJ watched my videos uh, a lot. Yeah. He, he was so funny the first time. And I, when I came here, like, when I trained with Tulsa last year, mm -hmm. at the end of the year, literally comes up and he's like hey what's up I'm like hey I'm Matt he's like yeah I know who you are and I was like wow this guy doesn't like me and then I realized like two days later that he watched my videos but like the first moment I'm like this guy hates me he's like yeah I know who you are like yeah. he said it like that and I was like oh damn like, all right oh, um and then Anthony too Anthony yeah. watched him oh wow that's it's awesome and Akil Akil, hey, Akil watch it too that's awesome it's so crazy to me it's crazy to me 
that it's that it's not. <laughs> we all know you, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate it, and, and it's cool that now you're on. Uh, yeah, on that's great. Like right now, yeah. going to be there. So that's um, cool. But yeah, this is Francely. Francely, Zephyrin, right? Yeah, Zephyrin. Name? Yeah, Zephyrin. I never actually said it out loud. I always yeah. just say Francely. <laughs> Zephyrin. So Francely Zephyrin, guys, go check him out. Stuff in the, in the description. Um, but yeah, thanks for hopping on the podcast. Thanks, man. Yeah, appreciate right. it. See you guys on the next one. Mm-hmm.